is made to wedge into the gullet and, yeah. and, and so and if you were to cut that that way you haven't changed the contour at all it still makes a perfect plug when camille was baby and he was weaning he obviously in the first stages he choked on a blueberry and it was so frightening literally i just had to grab him and just slap him on the back and just hope for the best like oh. Hello and welcome. This is a very special and hugely important new series on Channel Mum. There are no other video-based first day courses out there for parents quite like this one. So together with St John Ambulance, we're covering the topics all parents want to know about. I'm joined by TV's Dr Dawn Harper and mums Kate and Nilly. We know how important it is as a parent to feel confident and reassured that we would know what to do in a medical emergency involving our little ones. We really hope that by watching our videos that you go away better informed and more prepared for any emergencies that hopefully will never happen. This episode, we are going to be discussing choking. It's something that we know every mum and dad worries about. So first of all, just want to have a little chat and, and find out, have, have you guys got any experience of choking? Is this something that's happened to you with your children or someone you know? Um, well, when Camille was baby and he was weaning, he obviously, in the first stages, he choked on a blueberry and it was so frightening, literally. I just had to grab him and just slap him on the back and just hope for the best. Like. Oh, like but he was all oh, okay. Yeah, he was okay, yeah. But it's just frightening. Like, anything could have happened. Do you, do you feel that you were equipped to know how to do no, it? No, it was just like a natural instinct. Like, because when we choke, we bang on the back. I know we shouldn't, but that's what I do. And I just did it to him, hopefully. So it, it was fine, though, thank God. Dr. Dawn, we have um, a dish of <laughs> possible that's hazards really. that we find in all of our homes can you talk us through what absolutely we've got here? Do you know i think as soon as your your children sort of you start weaning and certainly when they become toddlers the world becomes a, a place of kind of possible danger mm. uh, and all the things that we take for granted as completely safe and part of a normal diet some of them uh, can be a real worry the first thing to say i think you know you you've already mentioned um your little boy when we're weaning, it's really important that actually, although yes, absolutely, we should be introducing our children to all sorts of different foods, we should never leave kids unattended. So even though they may be able to sit quite happily in a high chair and they can they can manage finger food, never ever leave them mm -hmm. unobserved because that's the one moment that something awful could happen. And, you know, I mean, the classic grapes okay lovely healthy food and of course children blueberries of course kids should be having that kind of food but this is the perfect shape to wedge um, and to cause choking and as you've just said I mean it's just terrifying when it happens and I think even when you are knowledgeable and you know what you what you need to do it can still be really frightening so it's really important that you you are aware because at least that will give you you've got a certain reflex and a certain kind of uh, it's a maternal instinct, paternal instinct to, to protect your kids, but knowing what to do is, is really important. So grapes, before we move on, because that is a big one for parents, isn't it? There's a certain way we should be cutting them, isn't there? Yeah, so if you, if you were to cut a grape, that is made to wedge into the gullet. And if you were to cut that that way, you haven't changed the contour at all. It still makes a perfect plug. If you cut a grape lengthways you've got a much better chance of that going the way it should go and not blocking off the airway. So always cut grapes that way before always, you always. to children. That's so important. It's, it's so important. You don't, even, you don't think you cut the grape, but you don't necessarily think, what way should I cut mm. it? You just think you've cut it safely, but it's, I you think it's really it important. It's a manageable size Less for your little one to yeah. pick up. Yeah. And up until what, what age? Because it's about the size of their, sort of their windpipe, isn't it? So how long should we be cutting them lengthways for? Um, I think certainly whilst you are, certainly up until a year, um, but I think whilst you are still needing to observe your children, so mm -hmm. once they're able to eat quite happily on their own unobserved, then you're probably pretty safe. Okay. But when they're diddy, um, we definitely need to be keeping an eye on them. Right. Always lengthways. Always. Must always remember lengthways. that. Pop Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, there's all sorts of other things. I mean, this is quite a large one, but a marble. Oh. You know, kids love playing with marbles. Yeah. A dice. Um, here we go, a peanut. Now, there's lots of controversy over peanuts and children. I know we keep changing the rules all the time <laughs> on whether or not you should give your children peanuts, but you know, anything nuts, um, those sorts of shapes. Or tiny coins. You know, kids yeah. love playing yeah. with coins, they yeah, love the they noise, do. they love the sound. But that is a perfect, you know, mm. the 5p, even worse, 
you know, perfect shape to get wedged. And it's the sort of thing they see mum and dad with money, so they think, you know, it's fun for them, isn't it? Like, you know, they want to copy. Oh, and I did it with money. You open to your person that keeps them quiet for five minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's really important that you keep an eye on them. And the, every, the things that are around in a house, you know, the top of a pen, um, so easy just to leave that around on a coffee table that maybe a little one could, could reach and get hold of. And obviously little toys, you know. Obviously, when we're, we're dealing with little ones, we expect them to have bigger, chunkier things yeah. because all kids will go through that phase where everything mm -hmm. goes from floor or table to hand to mouth. I think that's their way of exploring their world. Um, so if it's nice and big, they can't get it in there, but little toys, be we very careful. We were talking, careful. weren't we, about if you have older brothers or that's sisters, a, siblings, yes. and they have the really small toys, you may have a lot of things lying around the house that necessarily, when they're tiny, you, you wouldn't buy them. So that was interesting mm, as well. Yeah, so second it? and third children. Yeah. 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 Also, I think it's worth mentioning my son, um, he's, he's two, he'd stopped chewing things and I sort of thought we were safe and now he's suddenly back in a, a putting everything in his mouth phase again. So you can't, you can't sort of think, oh, it's all safe now. You know, yeah. things it's, are still yeah. You just have to be very aware. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that kind of size. And I guess this is probably one of the worst the batteries. Um, mm. I think when you see battery, you need to think poison because this isn't just a physical obstruction. Um, it's full of all those horrid, erosive chemicals, so that's yeah. that's really bad news. They terrify me. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, hopefully they're well and truly secured inside whatever toy, yeah. but, you know, they really are not good news. And I think, you know, all of these things, most of us would, wouldn't consciously leave our little ones around them, but it's very easy for them to fall down mm -hmm. behind the sofa or down in the car or, you know, in your handbag. Absolutely. Um, and, and kids are inquisitive, you know, they'll crawl across or toddle across and, and rummage through whatever. And the first thing they're likely to do when they pick something up is to put it in their mouth. And toddlers are experimental, aren't they? That's they, their job. They're, that's, yeah, yeah, that's they're exploring their, the world. That's their job description is to explore yeah, their world absolutely. and find out what it's about. Okay, so we've seen the hazards, things that our children could potentially choke on. Um, now, should we actually see what we should do in the instance of choking? Because that's why we're making this video here today. Now, Dr. Dawn has brought along a resussy baby My doll. own little baby. Yeah, so <laughs> Dawn, you're going to show us what to do in the event of choking. Okay, well, you? so the first thing is, is to recognise what's going on. Um, and, and the baby that's choking may well be reaching a little bit there's something stuck there they can't breathe they might be spluttering a little they may actually go a little bit blue around the gills all right you probably experienced mm. something similar so the first thing to do is if there is an obvious obstruction in the mouth to remove it but don't go poking your fingers in because the first thing you could do there is to actually push okay. whatever it is that's causing the problem further down and create a problem so with your baby here you want to place the baby over your lap and you really need to give a good thump with the heel of your hand and it's going to be harder than you would instinctively want to do. This is your loved baby and you're not going to want to whack it. But you do need to give enough force. You've got to really thump there because you want to really push that. You can hear, if you yeah. listen to the baby, you can actually hear yeah. that yeah. air coming yeah, out. Coming out yeah. They've got tiny little lungs. There's not an awful lot of air to push, but you need what's there to force whatever obstruction is out. But it's probably with the heel of your hand. With the there, heel so. of okay. your hand, and that will give you the force that you need. And be prepared to do up to five, okay? You okay. want to just check that you'll see if something's coming out. You'll also get a good cry once you've got the, yeah. <laughs> once you've got the, um, the, whatever it is dislodged. If that doesn't work, you need to turn your baby over, and you're looking to, if you're looking where the nipples are, and you're midway between the two with two fingers, and it's a good, hard push there. And again, you can hear. And it's, again, harder than you would think. So if you think that your baby's chest is sort of that deep, mm. the compression that you're doing wants to go a third of the way down. It's quite a lot wow. firmer than you would instinctively do. And you don't want to be fussing around with little... That's going to do nothing. It's just going to cause everybody more distress, all right? And it's five of those, again. It's still not right. You turn them over. And, of course, at that point, you're, you're calling for help. Okay, right. if, you, if you've not dislodged it at that stage, you need to make sure that somebody is dialing 999. Did you want to have a go? Yes, okay, thank you. So it's quite difficult to even know how to position them. So I would probably do something like that and then... Okay, so that's the right, the right force and, and yep. the right area, but what you want to try and do is to make sure that the head is slightly tipped down. Okay. Um, just thinking about that logically, that's just gravity on your yeah. side. Okay, so as soon as it's dislodged, it's going to go the way you want, not come back in. Okay. More like that. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. 
it's very it? scary. Well, it's the sort of thing that we hope we never need to use. We never need yeah. to do it. Right. But if we do, then knowing what to do is, you know, it's really between life and death. Can you show me again about the nipple part, like where, the level sure. where you should do it at? So you know where your baby's nipples are. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, even in a baby grow, everybody knows where their baby's nipples are. I and mean, you really need to be using a couple of fingers at nipple level, and it's a just and but it's really quite a firm push. It's a, a firm push, okay. And if you think you've then got something dislodged, you want to turn your baby over so they can spit. Can that I have out. a go? Right. So, I guess support their head, supporting them. Right, so sort of nipples be around here, sort of so. And that's about the right force. It's, it's hard. quite a bit stronger than you would expect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really hard. That is. That's good to know, though, because mm. as you say, you know, you, you're so delicate with your children, but in this in this emergency situation, you need it's to really time use some force. Okay, so that is um, how to deal with a choking baby. We really hope this has been helpful. Who else looks after your little ones, though, that should watch this now? A grandparent, a partner? What about friends with little ones? Please share this video now to save a life. A massive thank you to St John Ambulance for helping us create these videos, and of course to Dr Dawn and our lovely mums for being here today. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this series. They're all on channelmum.com. We would love you to leave us a comment and join in with the conversation.